When I was doing Batman and Robin, I think I thought I was playing Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman until I realized I wasn't. <laughs> Hi Glamour, today, oh no, hi Glamour, hi Glamour. <laughs> hi Glamour, I'm Alicia Silverstone and today I'm gonna to be breaking down some of my iconic looks from film and television. So let's start with The Crush, that's from 1993 and I loved doing this film so much. It was my first movie ever. I got to kiss Carrie Always from The Princess Bride, who I then thought was my boyfriend. <laughs> And it was just such an exciting role to play. I was so, um, so grateful to get that job. And it was really challenging and really exciting. Well, there's the checkered pink and white bathing suit, but there was also a bikini. Both of those are pretty um, special. I mean, there's so many outfits that are so interesting because there's the horse riding stuff, the, the boots and the, that was just a very nice, you know, rider outfit. And then there's the outfit when he first meets me and I'm, what do you call it, roller skating down the street and he almost hits me by the car and I look down with the glasses, the Lolita moment. And that outfit's really cute. It's like a little pair of shorts and um, a little white top tied. I had no fashion sense at all as a little person. So when I got the crush, I was still wearing the same green t-shirt with a little pocket and jeans. And that was my uniform. And that was my best look. So I saved that for all the special stuff and tried to wear it every day, but you can't wear it every day. None of these clothes had anything to do with me. This is all the costume designers, her vision. Batman and Robin 1997, that costume sucked. Um, God, I mean, it's cool to look at. All oh, those, those boobs are interesting. This pose, this pose is so funny. <laughs> but what sucked about it is just so uncomfortable to put it on. And you, I think they had to baby powder us. There was a whole production. George, Chris, and I had to go through a lot to get these things on. And once they were on, you couldn't get them off. It was a whole ordeal. But when I look at this cute little outfit with the tie, I forgot about that. I love that. And the little sweater, the schoolgirl outfit part. That's really sweet. When I was doing Batman and Robin, I think I thought I was playing Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman until I realized I wasn't. <laughs> so I was confused by my costume. <laughs> I mean, I obviously knew I wasn't, but in my mind, visually, that's what I was gonna look like. I was gonna be like Catwoman. But Catwoman is not the same as Batgirl. Aerosmith, 1994 crying video with Marty Calmer, the director. He had seen me in the crush and then asked me to do this. The wardrobe, I remember doing the fitting in Marty's office, like in the bathroom of his office. The boots that I'm wearing, these like work boots, were a gift from my way older than me boyfriend at the time. He was French hairdresser. He got me these boots. And the shirt was his too, that, that plaid shirt was his. So I just happened to be wearing it and they thought it looked great for this. I have some of these at home, the um, little dress that I wear. I mean, it would, I don't even know why I'm keeping it, it doesn't fit. Uh, <laughs> Clueless, 1995. Costume designed by Mona May and um, Amy Heckerling also helped a lot. Mona's so brilliant and these costumes are so good. These clothes made entrances and the funny story about this at the time is that, like I said, I wore a green t-shirt every day with jeans. So I had 64 costume changes and I had no patience for it, but I was, you know, a good girl. I would just stand there take deep breaths because I just didn't care about it at all, <laughs> like at all. And I don't even remember if I thought it was cute. Maybe I was like, well, that's cute, but I just didn't have a fashion sense. But once we were shooting, the clothes obviously inspired and informed me. I mean, we're, I, you feel very different running around in a big pair of work boots than you do running around in Little Mary Janes. And that changes how you walk, it changes how you feel, and those little knee highs, and then and then she was so dressed. I would never know how to put anything like this together. Not even now. So the fact that I had these full suits all the time, I think that gives you a sense of a different feeling of such put togetherness and 
she took the character takes things so seriously. She's a businesswoman. She's operating like her life is a business, and she's dressed for the part, very tidy and neat, and putting everything beautifully together. I'm looking right now at this, uh, the little triangle skirt with that black blazer, like velvet or something, and then the white underneath, and and then of course the alaya and the yellow plaid. And after the movie, I took a lot of the. I ran home with a lot of the clothes, and I tried to wear them in real life. But then I realized I'm not Cher, so this doesn't make any sense. I still want to just put on some jeans and a t-shirt and my tennis shoes. So I didn't find a way to use those in my real life, and I gave them all away. But over time, I have grown to really appreciate fashion and the art of it, and. As long as it's done responsibly. For me, it's really important that clothes are eco. So this dress is made by Doen, and it's an eco designer. What I think that Cher did so well that we all need to do, and I have adopted from her, is taking photos of outfits that you love and remembering them, because otherwise, they're gone. Once I've created something that I really like in my closet, I like to keep a picture of it so I can remember it. So when I go to go, what do I do with that shirt again? And make it happen quickly. And I have to tell you, I believe I'm gonna out Kanye West. We have to check if it's okay with him for me to tell you this. But um, he's told me, I saw him at a Stella McCartney opening thing one night and he sat down with me and he said, I just love how Cher had Polaroids and I do that too. And I don't know if he did the Polaroids before he saw Clueless or if he did it because he saw Clueless. That part we'd have to confirm with him. Vamps in 2012 was Mona May again, and the clothes are just so good. If you loved clueless costumes, I think you would love these. They're so elegant. My character's 200 and something years old, because she's a vampire. And so she's dressed, she's stuck in her old ways. She brings her old with a real mix of modern. So the clothes are just really, really lovely. You can feel all the age, the time periods that she's crossing through, and that's what's so fun about it, is the vintage mixed with the modern sexy twist. We had to go to vampire meetings, so we, you know, AA meetings for vampires to try not to eat humans, because we wanted to try and be good. Love's Labor's Lost from 2000. Shakespeare was the original writer, but he, Kenneth Branagh, adapted it for the screen, and he did it as a musical. And this was very brave, because not only was this the most unpopular Shakespeare play, one of them, musicals were dead. So this combination was a real bold thing to do, and it was so magical. This experience was so incredibly inspiring and exciting, and all the English actors were just so wonderful. The costumes, I think, are fantastic. And at this point, I had started to become conscious of not using animal in my clothes and no silk and no um, wool and all that. And the costume designer was so kind, Anna Baruma. Um, she did such a good job of making my clothes cruelty-free. I don't think they were eco yet. I hadn't crossed over to that bridge, but they were all vegan. And I think that they're so beautiful. I'm looking at this little white, I don't even remember having that on, but this white, number and it's so pretty. This is such a great costume film. They're very um, 1940s. I think it was 1940s that we were representing, right? I hope I've got that right. I think it was the 1940s or maybe it was 19... No, 1940s. Maybe it was 1920. I got it wrong. I don't know. American Woman 2018. I love this show so much. Oh my goodness. And Judith Gelman costume designer is so brilliant, so brilliant on so many levels. The clothes are stunning, but what I loved about it is, you know, we, I'm, I'm in almost everything that we shot, and so I had very little time for fittings, and she would just have, you'd go to her room and she'd have a few things hanging and they always all worked. Somehow, and that's not normal, <laughs> okay? Anyway, the costumes are so beautiful and I wanted my mom to see it because I felt like my mom in the show. I was born in 1976. The show takes place about 1975. This was a, another wave of women's liberation. We're talking about you're not allowed to write a check as a woman without a man. Like this was real in 1976. We were dealing with all of that in the show and it was also very sexy and fun and all those things, but my character was trying to make a life for herself as a woman who was single with two kids and 
had no idea what she was doing, had no skills at all, as her daughter points out to her, and you know, has been a housewife, like a fancy trophy wife. So the clothes are beautiful because she's, her husband was really well off and she just had, you know, the best clothes, the best jewelry. It was so glamorous. It's 1976 glamor. And I felt like the character the second I would put on those clothes and the jewelry and, and the hair and the makeup. It was just, this was so fun. And it was really nice to feel like my mom and to be, uh, to, be an, to, to get to take on what it would be like to be an empowered woman at that time, because she had to to survive. The Babysitter's Club, which we're on season two now, just came out, is, you know, she's a working mom, she does real estate, and she's, she's single in the beginning and then she ends up getting married. So her clothes evolve a little bit, but mostly she's just, you know, a working mom who's in real estate. You know, it's like tasteful, elegant, everyday mom kind of vibe. She's focused on her work and she wants to look good for her husband, but she's not like on the side into fashion. That's not what she's, she's got four kids for God's sakes. And um, <laughs> she's trying to make another one. What's wrong with her? And I mean, <laughs> So she's, um, I mean, I understand her. I understand, they're beautiful. Thank you, Glamour, for having me here and letting me go down memory lane while looking at all these beautiful costumes. So fun.